a competitive situation between whether I shall I go for cost reduction or CO2 emission reduction. And um, at the end, there the eco-efficiency cost reduction in the manufacturing side. Okay, there we have um, again this um, both benefiting from it. We have the uh, cost reduction and we have the CO2 reduction. We could see if we say the cost reduction is the main main part of our work, then we have at least the co-benefits of the CO2 emissions um, in in two of the three tackled um, value chain. Um, sectors, which is I think quite um, quite convincing that we say okay, if we go anyway for for a cost reduction and, and can reduce the emissions, let's go for it. It must be convincing. The second statement is um, all services and innovations need to have service providers in order to be sustainable in long term. I think one of our success stories is that. We really try to to um, ensure existing the existence of a market. So we wanted to have um, um, a market where where we say, okay, with eco efficiency, I reach I reach a, a certain market. But um, how do I come to this market? How do I achieve this this goal of an uh, eco efficiency um, or eco efficient product, for example? We need we need the support. I mean, many companies are aware about existing labels, uh, aware about existing uh, uh, trends, but who really helps uh, the companies to 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 become eco-efficient? So we worked on the establishing of a landscape for service providers, service providers which were at the, at the first financed via our sources, financial sources. And once we have seen that, for example, the introduction of an MIS with a local uh, service provider is uh, very uh, beneficial for these companies, we have said, okay, now the requests from other companies are coming more and more. Now these companies have to pay because we have tried, if this is feasible, we have tried whether this um, service uh, provision is uh, at the end a benefit for these companies. So we have shown this is really uh, a result that cost production is going down uh, production cost is going down so these service providers are now available for the market where you pay for it um, and at the end if you have these service providers being in this market they have an own interest to develop further um, the market for their services so you get then a circle which is more or less self-running self um, and this was an, an excellent exit strategy where we could pull out uh, easily then as GDZ with financial sources, uh, resources. The third statement is uh, market stimulation and um, how to stimulate the market. Um, we say, okay, quality and standards is very important. First of all, to develop a market. For example, if you look at the solar thermal market as one of the elements for um, energy efficiency or make use of renewable energies uh, for the production um, process. So we need to develop a market on the solar thermal applications, for example, because the market here, there are some companies who are producing um, are producing solar, uh, solar thermal um, um, applications, but um, at the end, there is not really a market where this, where uh, so many are demanding these products. The second is how to how to reach markets. Also, for example, with uh, certain um, labeling or with certain standards to reach, for example, export markets. And the last one is to sustain the markets. If we see, for example, the biogas market, I mean, I think this has, has uh, been an excellent market or is still an excellent market in Thailand. But if we see now some performance criteria, performance, real performance, compared to the expected performance of biogas plants in Thailand, um, then we see there is partly only 30% achieved from the expected performance. So we need to sustain the market with quality and with standards because otherwise people lose again trust in, in this market, in these products, especially in this um, eco-efficiency products which are not usually linked with the um, 
competitiveness um, aspect. Um, since I have been shown that I have only two minutes left, um, we have worked also on the organic um, field, for example, and here just as, uh, as an explanation, we have looked f f at the uh, first f in the food and vegetable sector, how can we uh, increase the competitiveness for the company? So the, the uh, column in the, in the center of this uh, table um, looked at the competitiveness issues at the market, as the, uh, at the, um, the, the trend and also the demand of these products and we said okay if if we really help um, the farmers to go for organic trading for for organic pr uh, producers from for from uh, fr fruit or vegetables this is an competitiveness issue which is really worth to invest at the end we have on both sides on the left and on the right hand side also this co benefits um, we have we can achieve also um, co2 reduction if we have an, an proper organic um, farming and on the other hand we have also uh, created more green jobs in this field so why are the competitiveness we came to the climate change uh, or climate protection Um, these are achievements. So, my last uh, my last slide, where I would like to to uh, also uh, raise the discussion, or would also like to uh, stimulate um, the the critical discussion, is uh, on the one hand, what we have recognized in our work is how to ensure the long term investment in sustainable consumption production, how to convince companies, especially small and medium enterprises, how to convince them to invest into uh, ecological friendly. Uh, plans or investments which have maybe a payback period of, of more than five years or six years. Who is thinking longer than five or six years uh, from these um, enterprises? So this really sometimes a, d a challenge uh, which we have to, to address and uh, which we have to really uh, face um, if we want to convince uh, in, in cleaner production. There are solutions which have a less um, or lower payback period than uh, than, uh, than are immediately convincing, but there are a lot of others who uh, need a lot of more time of uh, the payback period. And the second discussion I would like to to raise is <coughs> how to ensure that climate protection measures are not leading to a more environmentally polluted Earth. <coughs> um, I don't know whether you have discussed this yesterday, but uh, for me, climate protection is only a smaller part. For example, if you look at biogas plants and if you see everybody's talking about the methane capture, okay, this is one thing, but um, the wastewater which is going then to the river is often still polluted and is not still uh, not uh, clean according to um, wastewater standards, um, which are how they look should look like, but everybody's more looking at the, the methane capture and nobody's so much interested anymore in, in um, environmental protect environmental protection um, yeah with this um, two questions I would like to close the the presentation I think you have seen that in uh, in the in the printout there are some more details about the projects also and um, yeah I'm looking forward to answer also critical questions thank you very much thank you very much uh, Torsten for this very good presentation I think we have got some insight now about the multi-level approach of uh, the program and uh, we learned also that eco-efficiency and sustainable uh, consumption and production is also a matter of competitiveness and of having a market to be sustainable and having uh, sufficient demand. So please, I would like to open the floor for any comments, questions for the audience here in the uh, conference hall, but also in the web. Yes, Professor Murray. Ah, good morning. Thank you very much. Um, I have a, a question uh, that is... Uh, by promoting eco-efficiency, uh, the number of uh, new jobs created uh, is increasing or decreasing at, as a total. Uh, 
that is a question about uh, a factory.